hello <laughs> and welcome to my channel my name is Stacy I am stress knits on Instagram I am coming to you from a very stormy and rainy Detroit Michigan where I live with my husband Doug our daughter Eliza and our pug Esther today is July 20 2023 and I'm so excited that I have some time to talk to you before my trip to Seattle. My mom and I are going to Seattle and we're also going to be going to Flock Fiber Festival and also um, Olympic National Park and it's a once in a lifetime trip for us. I have never been out west. Uh, recently my husband Doug and I just did like a like an interactive map where you um, highlight each state you've been to and mine is heavily concentrated to the east it's like it's also not very much um but I've never been west of Wisconsin and I've never seen an ocean and both things are not going to be true in two weeks so I'm very excited about that and I'm also very excited that some of you will be at flock my mom and I are going Saturday <laughs> uh, probably in the morning um we're very excited to see you. So if you are there, please say hi. Um, I have a very hard time in crowds and social <laughs> occasions, but uh, I am very excited to meet you. So um, sorry if I'm awkward. Sorry if it's, um, I don't know. I just, I get very nervous meeting people. So I hope that it goes well, but I'm very, very excited. So Yes, I am so excited to talk to you. I'm very excited, as you can tell. And there's going to be really loud thunder in a couple seconds. Um, maybe. <laughs> but I love summer thunderstorms. Um, this was not on the radar, and it just kind of popped up. And those are my favorite kind in the summer. I didn't have to water today. And um, we're also going through a pretty big heat wave. We're going to be in the 90s most of the week, which... For us is not unusual for the summer, but it's been relatively chilly this summer compared to other years. Lots of high 70s and 80s. Um, I don't think we've hit 90 yet this year. So bizarre, just bizarre. Um, but it looks like the storm has passed. Um, I started recording this in, during the worst part of the storm and I had to stop because I was so distracted by all of the thunder and all of the lightning and it was very heavy rain uh, but this is my favorite kind of summer weather and I'm not a summer girl I'm not I'm a fall winter girl but I very much enjoy the rainy evenings okay so I wanted to talk to you uh, I've got some fit I have a finished object and I have um, some works in progress I saw it. I saw it happen. <laughs> Sorry for the jump scare everybody. It scared me too. Um, but um, I have finished objects and works in progress and also I'm dabbling in a new craft that I'm excited to share with you. It is not going well and I don't think I like it very much but regardless I'm excited to share it with you. So let's start off with my finished object. I have finished knit the mini mock neck tank by Jessie Made Designs and I love it. It's what I'm wearing. Um, full disclosure, I'm not wearing a bra that I would normally wear with this and two, um, it is not blocked and most of the ends are not woven in. So take it with a grain of salt. All right, here it is. And I'm wearing like <laughs> leisure shorts so don't judge, you know. Um, but here it is. I am so happy with it. I knit this using, there's going to be more thunder y'all. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm thriving. I love this weather. <sighs> okay. I use the, <laughs> the lamb and kid trio um which is a merino nylon cashmere yarn 450 yards per 100 grams so it is a very light fingering here here's my leftovers um i used um over two and a half skeins this is what i have left of the second skein 
and the color is bell bottom blue and the color right now is absolutely perfect this is exactly what it looks like um i love the yarn it is incredible and i'm just i'm so excited to talk about this pattern because i am a tight knitter <laughs> very tight knitter and usually i have to go up a um a size or two in pattern or a needle size or two to get gauge and that was true with this um i originally started on a us4 needle and knitting the size extra large um or a 2x I started knitting a 2x to get an extra large because i wanted um i wanted no ease i wanted it to just be my measurements um which is a 44 inch bust at the moment so um so that's what i went with and i <laughs> okay so <laughs> sorry about that Doug told me I have to leave it in because it's very funny. So hopefully I figured out how to like put a countdown to the scary part. Um, <laughs> that was the craziest. Um, the storm is pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's pretty gnarly. Okay, reset. Um, whew, okay, so I <laughs> wanted a 44 um, inch garment. I wanted it to be no ease whatsoever, no negative, no positive. Um, and I am pretty close. I have some positive ease um, and I'm not upset about it. I actually really love the way that this fits. I also knit it to 11 inches before I did the inch and a half of ribbing at the bottom. And I did a shorter collar. Um, I only did about a half an inch of color because I felt like that would have been a little bit too much for me if it went up a little bit higher. And I'm really happy with these modifications. Um, I, so to get gauge, so I originally started on a four and I was knitting the back panel because you start on the back and I was knitting it and I was looking at how small it was and I was like, this isn't going to be good. So I took my gauge on the back panel and I did the math and I was gonna come out to a 37 inch bust. It's a little too much negative ease for me, a lot of negative ease for me. I think it would have worked um, maybe as like a bralette situation, but not as a top that I want to wear in the wild. So um, I decided that I would just try to go up to a US five and also increase to a three X to get me somewhere closer to the large, extra large range, which is exactly what happened. So I um, I knit US 4 to a certain spot. I think it's like where it says full back instructions and then I knit with a five and then I just started the front with a five and I really like the way that it fits. And so um, I have no complaints there and that's entirely on me for not taking gauge and knowing that I'm a tight knitter. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Other than that, I didn't make any modifications. I think the arm is perfect. Also, this is gonna block a little bit out. Um, and it's just the perfect little tank top. So my plans um, is to wear this with a skirt, maybe a shorts. I could see myself in the fall and winter and spring, and even now, <laughs> layering a flannel over this or, um, or sweater or something along those lines because it's very breathable. It's not super hot. Um, I don't know, I just really enjoy the fabric and I really enjoy the knit so much so that my next work in progress is number two. Um, so if you have been following along on my Patreon channel, I've been doing um, weekly vlogs over on Patreon. So if you want to join that, the link will be below. Um, and thank you if you are there. It helps a lot when I'm not working this summer. Um, I dropped some stitches. So let me pick those up. 
but I cast on my second and I just started with US fives and knitting. Um, I'm going to knit the 2X size to give myself a little bit more, I'll just pick that up, um, a little bit more maybe like no ease slash maybe an inch or two negative ease. I think that'll be good. But I am using the Lame and Kid Trio yet again because I love it in my favorite colorway from the Lame and Kid Slug. And it's just this perfect scummy golden yellow and I love it so much. And I've wanted to knit a garment with Slug, but I always thought that a sweater would be just a little bit too much for me, maybe. I don't know. I've kind of changed my mind now that I'm knitting with it. Um, and I also plan to knit a hat out of it. This is the yarn that I, the colorway that I'm looking for when I go to flock. I love a scummy greeny yellow. Um, yes. So I'm knitting a second one in slug. So I'm working on the back panel right now. I should have the back complete tonight probably. Um, and my goal is to connect it in the round before we leave so that this can be my plain knitting. Um, because we have like a four and a half fl hour flight to Seattle, five hours, somewhere in there. Um, so I want to pack something very mindless and wonderful. Uh, and knitting around and around in knit stitch is exactly what I want to do. So here she is looking beautiful and I also just really love, I just love this color and it's bringing me a lot of joy um so I have the second skein downstairs ready to go uh, and I'm just knitting on this while I'm watching Succession I finally started Succession I did not jump on the bandwagon when it was airing um but I am on season two and I hate everybody in the show that's very strong language I shouldn't say that but there are no good characters there so far Maybe there's some redemption somewhere. They're all horrible, but I'm really enjoying the show. So there's that, <laughs> but I'm really enjoying Succession. Um, and then I'm also probably bringing my half and half triangles wrap. This is Bird's Egg Blue, Pearl Soho Linen and Quill. The half and half triangles wrap um, is a free pattern on Pearl Soho's website. And I've knit quite a few. Um, I think this is number six. And I just, I love it. And I think I'm going to go with the yellow. There's another bolt of lightning. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go with a bright yellow to pair with this because I'm really enjoying that com combination right now, which you'll kind of see as my whole theme uh, minus this project. So the other thing that I cast on is inspired just like the um, mini mock tank in Trio. The Weekender Big Birdie Edition is inspired by Caddy Jack's Knits. Um, Jackie and Caitlin are hosting a knit along called the Three Day Weekender KAL and I I had to. <laughs> I had to jump on the bandwagon. I thought there's nothing better than a big cozy fuzzy sweater. So I cast on, I'm knitting the smallest size, um, which should give me like a medium to large, which is exactly what I would knit um, if I was following the gauge for the pattern. And I, the whole cowl thing is to modify the weekender in I think two to three ways, something along those lines. So I am using Big Birdie is one, <laughs> one modification. And then I'm adding these little, um, little stripes of maybe like an embellishment is a better word, embellishment of color on all of the finishes of this pattern. So the uh, hem has this little strip of pout, just this color. And then the cuffs will have a strip of grandma's button. Um, and then the main color is oats. And this is all big birdie. It's Surrey alpaca um, silk, I think. Maybe it's something else as the core, but 
it's a wonderful fluffy yarn and it's so much fun to work with and I only put this on hold so I could make sure my trio tank was done for flock but now I will be picking this up and probably more so after my trip. I'm loving it. It's just a super simple knit. I love the weekender. I'm enjoying it. Um, and that is all of my knitting. <laughs> um, the tank has really taken up a bunch of my knitting time and I've also just had not had a ton of knitting time. Um, we are going through all of these processes for Eliza and her autism diagnosis and it, that's taking up a lot of time and that is fine, right? It's just the season of life we're in. And so my knitting mojo has kind of just been up and down and the time has been up and down. Um, so I'm just trying to embrace that and knit on what I want to. So the other part of the flock fiber outfit that I want to wear is a skirt, specifically the gypsum skirt from So Liberated. I am doing view a B, which is just the simple skirt with inside pockets instead of the outside pockets. I don't really know how else to explain that because I'm not a sewist. Um, and I don't think I'll ever be um, prolific or anything like that, but I can see myself sewing some skirts and dresses and tops here and there but I'm realizing about myself that I don't have the patience for this. It's a little fiddly for me and it's just not something I'm super enjoying and maybe that will change the better I get at it, but it is causing a lot of frustration. Um, yeah, so um, I'm, I started off with a fabric because the original fabric I want to wear with this top is this um, bright yellow linen, right? So good, so summery, and I just love this. And it is a lighter linen. It might even be a linen cotton blend. So instead um, of going right into this in case I, you know, wasn't great at it the first go around, I went with a um, fabric I got on Crazy Clearance at Joann's. Actually, both of these are from Joann Fabrics. Um, but I got I got this like crazy on sale. It was like $3 a yard on sale. And it's a like a polyester like rayon. It's wonderful. Um, it's the perfect fabric for a skirt. So it's almost done. It'll be done either today or tomorrow. Um, I just need to sew in the elastic um, and hem the skirt and that's all that's waiting for me but it kind of went on pause so I um, this was five hours of work last night because I was so frustrated but now that I've worked through the the process and I understand what the directions are um, I think the next one will go a little quicker um, and realizing that like I should cut out fabric one night and then I should do a couple steps and take a break and I just need to get better at not killing myself trying to finish things and have it be perfect because I am learning and it's okay that it's not perfect but in my brain I'm like I have to be good right away and because I'm not I'm very frustrated and I don't know if you guys can relate to that I know a lot of you probably can um so I've been really struggling with this and the fit um because I did finish the elastic originally and it's just too big. It's probably about two sizes too big. I cut out the size 16, which was a size down from my measurements in the schematic um, because I heard it kind of ran a little big. So I wanted to go down one size instead of going down a couple of sizes just in case, but an elastic waistband is super forgiving and it's a very full skirt. Um, so I've, the way that I'm fixing this to make it wearable um, is I've just cut the elastic by a couple of inches. And so that it'll really like cinch everything in and hopefully that will fix the problem. And I know a lot of you are probably like screaming at me that that's a really bad idea, but 
I'm learning, I'm figuring stuff out, and if it doesn't work, then I'll take out and um, take it in, maybe. Maybe. I don't know, but I wanna show you the progress. So, I think it's just, it's just very big. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, here it is. And I'm very proud of my pockets. They're, it's not a perfect skirt by any means, but I also just want to kind of give you the look I'm going for. <laughs> like, I'll put it on because I have shorts on. Okay. So again, this is, it's too big. Um, but if I take it in like that much, um, It'll be good. It'll just be the waistband so that the skirt will still be pretty full. Um, yeah, that's what's going on with that. So next time I'm probably going to cut out the size 12 and I think the 12 will be perfect for this. Um, and then hopefully there will be less hiccups <laughs> along the way. Um, yeah, and like once the because this is where the elastic ends now that I've cut it. I need to pull it out and um, just re-put it in, actually. Um, and once I do that, I really think it's going to just cinch it up and it's going to be fine. And if not, that's okay. Because I'm learning. Um, but once I finish this, I'm going to cut out the pieces for the yellow linen go down to a size 12, like I said, and that should be, should be good. Um, unless like, I'm gonna go off how this fits and I might go down to a size 14 if it's really nice. Um, if the skirt's nice and full, like I like with a smaller waistband. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm gonna go off of this I can do anything rash until that's done. I'm very excited to have a skirt out of this fabric as well. And I'm not going to lie to you, I think my fabric choice um, was a little ambitious for me sewing by myself for the first time because I've sewed with my friend Jacqueline, Jacqueline Salem over on YouTube. And um, we did a like linen cotton shirt together. And um, yeah, this is a much silkier fabric it's slinkier um and so it also didn't hold down um hold the shape when I pressed um seam allowances and stuff like that so I think I really set myself up for failure with the skirt but again I have no idea what I'm talking about I have no idea what's going on we're figuring it out um and I'm very excited to do the yellow and I also have a green linen cotton blend too and I, and I have a dark red um, double gauze, and I would really love a navy skirt as well. So I think skirts is kind of going to be my thing with sewing, and maybe some tops. I have a couple of patterns picked out. But again, this is not going to become an everyday hobby for me. This will be, I really want this item, <laughs> and so I'm going to make it um, kind of situation because I just... I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy knitting. Um, and that's really everything that's going on. I do want to give you some stress knits updates. So I am taking a step back, but because it is the summer, I have a little bit more time on my hands. I am currently dyeing yarn for an update that will be on Monday, July 30th, 31st, whatever that day is. Um, I think 31st, July has 31 days, right? I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will have mini skeins and some tonals and then, um, that will all get shipped out, um, right before I leave for my trip. So it'll be shipped out by that Thursday that I leave. And then the, um, the afterglow pre-order will go out when I get home because I'm also working on that but 
I am just so excited um, to share more yarn with you while I can. And also I'm very excited for this trip. So I will put more details on my Instagram account, which is linked in the description box below. Um, that is really all I have to share with you. Next time we chat, it will be all about Seattle and my trip. So I cannot wait to see you next time. And again, if you are going to be at Flock Fiber Festival on Saturday and you see me and my mom, please feel free to say hello. Um, I can really can't wait to meet some of you. So with that, I will let you go and I will talk to you soon. Bye.